included in C++ Builder XZ3 are all sorts of image effects and transitions that you can use in your applications. So if you have an application that does something with images and you'd like to have some special effects take place, let me show you a few things you can do in C++ Builder. All of these effects use the shader commands that are part of a GPU pixel shader 2.0 or greater. So we'll say File New, FireMonkey Desktop Application HD. And let's just put an image at the top and we'll load a, a bitmap into the image. We've got some sample pictures here. One of my favorites, the koalas. And we'll do a fit to the control and say OK. And now we've got this cute, cuddly koala bear that we can uh, play with. And down here in the tool palette are a whole set of non-visual controls that you can use for doing different kinds of image effects. And again, these are all built on top of the pixel shader language that are executed inside of a GPU. So for example, we could uh, maybe take this koala and apply a sepia effect. Uh, we can say the amount of sepia, amount in this case through the object inspector is 0 to 1, 100%, or no sepia, or something that's 50%. And we can enable and disable it. Also, there's a monochrome effect. We can associate that with the image. Now we get monochrome. We can enable and disable it. You can also set a trigger. So we want to trigger the effect when the mouse is over the control. So we'll run the application when the mouse is over the image. Notice it triggers the effect. And there are all sorts of triggers. Mouse, is it uh, dragging over? Is it focused? We can set the triggers on each one of these. There are many other effects that we can choose from. Bloom, gloom, uh, hue adjust. Let's put that one down. And there's a hue associated with it. Let's. Uh, change that to uh, 1 or 0 0.5. We can do an invert, put it on the image. And there's the invert effect. So there are many different kinds of effects. You can color key. So some people have asked, what about, uh, like you see on the weather on television, where you can make parts of the picture disappear and see what's underneath. So you can use color key and set the color for the alpha channel that will, uh, so let's put a color key. In this case, let's uh, set the color saying anything that tan, so we can see things disappearing, and you can set a, a tolerance level. And then whatever is underneath the image uh, will show through. So usually you would use that with something like green screen, is what uh, television and the movies usually use. There are lots of other kinds of effects. Blur effect, if we associate that, we blur it. This really hurts my eyes. Let's disable it. Uh, maybe you want to call attention to part of the image and tell it how much uh, to blur. And there are several different kinds of blurs, box, uh, directional blur, radial blur, which is around a, a center point. There are also transition effects. So for example, we might want to dissolve from one image to another. Maybe you're doing a slideshow example. And so the dissolve transition effect, you can put that on this image and tell it how much, what the progress is. Let's do zero. And we can put a second bitmap that would be the target bitmap. Let's load in uh, penguins and we'll fit that to the area. And now when we enable it and we set the progress to, uh, to something between zero and 100%, we get a 30% dissolve, a 50% and 100% to get to those. And here's an example where we can use uh, float animation. Let's put a button down, set this title to click me to dissolve. Dissolve transition has this progress property and we'll put a float animation. We'll put that float anim animation on the dissolve. And the property we want to uh, set is the progress and we'll start and go from uh, zero to a hundred. We'll do that over three seconds and we will loop it and do an auto reverse. So when we click here, we're going to set the dissolve transition enabled equal to the opposite of whatever it's currently doing. And also the float animation will set that enabled. 
and make sure that we've got all the property set for auto reverse and have it on loop and let's uh, set the right property. Let's uh, run this example and click and now it's doing the dissolve back and forth between the penguins and the and the koala. So lots of different effects that are available uh, for image processing uh, inside of FireMonkey and you can access those in your C++ application. And all of these effects are part of the pixel shader support that's in FireMonkey. If we take a look at the source code here, we've got all the different effects inside of our form class. And up here, because we use some filter effects, we can open up the file here. And this has the interfaces for all the different effects for C++ that go down inside of the FireMonkey runtime. And inside the FireMonkey runtime is all of the support for the different filters. Uh, this is the interfaces. And again, uh, underneath the implementation is done in, in the Delphi language. And that's where you'll find the pixel shader source code. So let's go and open a source file go under source, FMX. Then if we open up the source code for some of the standard filters and we look for CPF, for example, uh, it'll show us the CPF filter constructor. And here we've got uh, shader language for DirectX 9, for DirectX 10, for OpenGL, and so on. So you can go and look here inside of the this pre-compiled shader code uh, for the different transitions, for the different effects, rotate crumple, and so on. So it's all there inside the source code that you get with C++ Builder XZ3. Lots of image processing. Again, down here inside of the image effects area. You can also look at the doc wiki. Doc wiki has a page and we can search for uh, effects. And so when you look at the image effects page, there's a really nice uh, help and doc wiki article. In this case, it shows you uh, for each of the effects, what the result is. Monochrome, contrast, RGB effects, uh, blurs, swirls, emboss effect, uh, magnify where you pick a point and the level of magnification. Uh, you can crop, you can change the perspective, you can tile an image, and then you have additive effects, you've got transition effects, and these there's these little uh, image shifts that show you what happens during the different transitions. And there are lots of different transitions that you can uh, that you can use. So if we look and type transition, there's uh, swirls, blinds, circles, magnify, crumples, fade, bright, transition effects, pixelate, I think over 50 uh, different kinds of effects that are available for images uh, with your C++ Builder XZ3 applications. That's just a quick look at using image effects and image transitions in a C++ Builder application.